Hello, I'm Dan Jurgen. Welcome to Sierra Week 2015, and I'm very pleased to welcome Bob Dudley, CEO of BP. Uh, and Bob, we're really pleased that you've come back and joined us again at this conference. Great, great to be here. It's a great, great. gathering of our industry. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, but it's a different environment than uh, last time you were here. Prices are much lower mm. now. Mm. Uh, how do you see the impact of the price, and how is it your expectation, and how is it affecting BP? You think about it, what a, what a difference a world, a year makes in the world. We, we were only just beginning to talk about Ebola and Ukraine and ISIS and everyone felt unshakable about $100 oil. It's different and so we've all been through a number of these price changes. The industry is very rapidly adapting. I think looking at the amount of supply on the world and, and the impacts of the shale oil in the U.S., I think we've got to plan on this being for a while. So. Uh, Right. Lots of changes. I mean, you've lived through many cycles in the industry, and mm. w one of the things I'm struck by is the sense that, not mm. that people have seen this before, but realizing that this is a cyclical industry and you've got to adjust. Yeah, if you look at the graph, the last three, three or four years of $100 oil seems very uh, somewhat stable around 100 but if you go back 30 years, it's uh, lots of volatility. And the price flies around depending on whether there's excess supply or not enough supply. This one looks like there's excess supply. It could be with us for a while. How, are you, how is BP adjusting? Well, we're very rapidly reducing and making some tough choices in capital. We're deferring projects. We're not really cutting projects that I think will you know, affect longer term growth. But 15% reductions in capital and uh, significant reductions in our operating costs and expenses. How is your, your business and your endeavors going in Russia? Well, Russia, we, we just celebrated uh, 25 years of working in Russia. It's always a bit adventurous, ups and downs. We've got very good relationships working with Rosneft, very committed to that investment. Uh, and I think we'll look at future investments in Russia, always working to stay, make sure that we are absolutely working within the laws and sanctions. Right. But not a, not a problem. So, mm -hmm. and obviously the sanctions are a reality that shape what you can and can't do. Well, that's right. The sanctions have certainly cut back on access to technology by Russia, certainly the Arctic and some of the unconventional work. Uh, so, but the, it's what I call it, the bread and butter, oil and gas, brownfield, water flooding technologies, I think that's a different matter. So BP recently looked ahead in its 25, 35 mm -hmm. year forecast looking out. And uh, how does the energy world look to you all? We do look out to 2035 in, in quite a bit of detail, and um, we have lots of debates with people outside who say that uh, hydrocarbons are going away, or fossil fuels are going away, and certainly I think the world is in a long wavelength transition to lower carbon energy. But our, our look at the world at 2035, and I keep track of it by these, these rules of 27. That, uh, probably, yeah, you've talked about the rule of 27. Yeah. Please explain it. Well, it's, it's the way I can keep track of our demand forecast. So in 2035, the percentage of energy demand will be supplied 27% with natural gas, 27% with oil, 27% with coal. So you add that up, it's over 80% of the world's energy will be supplied by fossil fuels. Uh, the, the market shares move up and down. Right. I mean, natural gas is going up most certainly in that. Uh, and renewables, 3% today maybe, uh, moving up to 8% by 2035. It's a big increase, but uh, we'll, right. we're going to need all forms of energy in the yeah. next 20 years. So the, 27, 20, the rule of 27 is very interesting because it's a world in which there's not a dominant fuel, and that's uh, a very unusual state. If you look beyond 2035, would you you bet in that horse race as to which one is going to pull ahead? It's a good point. It's never happened in the world before where you have you know, three different kinds of fuel all uh, supplying. I think natural gas clearly is going to be the one to uh, pull ahead in terms of the shares. Right. And I think oil will still have a significant share. And probably coal is the most challenged because of the emissions. Uh, right. But, uh, and then if you look at where the demand growth is, uh, Europe, uh, North America, there'll be no increase really in energy demand right. 20 years from now. It'll primarily all be in Asia. Right. Uh, uh, in North America, in the United States, onshore, mm. you've created a new uh, onshore company. Mm. What's the idea there and what are you trying to accomplish and how is it going? Well, we call it right now the Lower 48 Group. Uh, it's where we took our large onshore North American gas uh, assets, and it's a seven billion barrel 
oil equivalent resource base. So it's a very big company, around three, over 300,000 barrels a day of production today. To be honest, Dan, I didn't think we could make it run economically or efficiently, burdening it with all of the overhead. And, and in our case, many of our offshore safety standards we were trying to apply in all of our drilling everywhere on an onshore U.S. company. So we disconnected that. It'll operate safely, absolutely, and all within uh, regulations and requirements. Remove some of the overhead burdens of that company and see if we can turn it into a fast, efficient, onshore, uh, independent-like uh, part of the right. company. And uh, will it ha is it focused on unconventionals as well? We have uh, c conventional gas and tight gas and unconventional gas. Yes, it, it is involved in the, uh, the shale gas. has some shale liquids with it as right. well. That's good. And we'll give it some capital uh, right. to be able to move its own portfolio around. So the Utica, is that being done through that company? It was being done there. I think quite, if I'm honest, we had the wrong acreage in the Utica. So we have stepped back from the Utica, but quite a bit in the Eagleford, uh, some in the Permian, Haynesville, right. and... Uh, Quite a bit of conventional gas in Colorado and uh, Oklahoma. Right. Well, Bob, thank you very much for this conversation. I've mm -hmm. been talking with Bob Dudley, CEO of BP, and uh, thank you for joining us at Sierra Week 2015.